to destroy the works of the evil one and the kingdom of darkness with light and to rescue men from the law of sin this is the gospel of christ to proclaim good news unto the poor the gospel of christ spreading the soul-saving message of jesus and now ben bailey this is the gospel of christ in revelation chapter 2 and verse 4 jesus said to the church in ephesus nevertheless i have this against you because you've left your first love we welcome you today to our study of relighting our passion for jesus friend is your passion for christ what it once was do you have that zeal and desire that you really want to have if not stay tuned as we look at god's plan for relighting our passion for christ welcome to the gospel of christ program my name is ben bailey and we're so glad that you've joined us for our broadcast today today's lessons are being brought to you by members of the church of christ worldwide those members of the Church of Christ in your area would love for you to stop by and visit their worship assembly. If you've got a Bible question or there's something you'd like to study, they'd be happy to sit down and study the Word of God together with you. Also, at the Gospel of Christ, we'd love to help you in your study of the Word of God. You can log on to our website, thegospelofchrist.com, and all our Bible study material is free of charge and available to you. If you'd like to have a copy of today's lesson, whether on DVD or CD, we'd love to send that to you. You can fill out a media request form from our website, or you can call us toll-free at 1-855-4-855. 3905. On our website, we have a host of Bible study material, including transcripts, study question, question and answers, and a variety of study materials that would help you in your study of the Word of God. Friend, at the Gospel of Christ, we're concerned about the salvation of souls. That's our main emphasis. We're not concerned about your wallet. We're not concerned about hidden agendas. We just simply want to help men and women know the Word of God and to go to heaven. And so as we transition to our study today, we hope that you'll get your Bible out and have it handy as we're going to look to the Word of God together. In Philippians chapter 3, verses 12 through 14, Paul gives us a beautiful pattern for relighting and keeping that fire for Christ aflame. Notice the words of Philippians chapter 3, beginning in verse number 12. Not that I've already attained, or am already perfected, but I press on, that I may lay hold of that for which Christ Jesus has also laid hold of me. Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead, I press toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Maybe at times in our life, we find ourselves in a rut. Or maybe spiritually speaking, our lives are really not as passionate and as on fire for the Lord as they ought to be. Friend, the Lord did find this problem in one of the seven churches in Asia Minor. In Revelation 2 verse 4, Jesus again said, I've got a problem with you. I've got a problem with the congregation in Ephesus. Here it is. You've left your first love. Now Ephesus was a congregation that had to give up a lot. You read Acts chapter 19, they burned their magic books. They left their affinity and their familiarity with the temple Diana and the goddess Diana. And they turned away from all of that. And, and for a good while, the Word of God was growing and multiplying in that city. But somewhere along the way, they got a little stagnant. Somewhere along the way, they, they got in a rut. And they were maybe just going through the motions. And so Jesus says, you've left your first love. Whatever that was, love for evangelism, love for worshiping God, fervor and, and daily uh, living for Christ every day, whatever it may have been, they let that love wane. And friend, if we're not careful, uh, Christians today, we today can also have that same problem. I want you to think about when you first obeyed the gospel, when you first became a Christian, when you really made that initial commitment to Christ. 
Now think about where you are today. Are you as on fire and as passionate and as energetic for the Lord as you once were? If not, it may very well be the case that we need to relight our passion for serving Jesus. How do we do that? Paul gives us a fourfold pattern in this text for keeping that fire for Christ aflame like it ought to. What's the first point? We must, if we're going to serve God and have that true passion, have a holy dissatisfaction with self and where we are. Now, let me explain that. Paul said in Philippians 3 verse 12, Not that I've already attained or am already perfected, now, friend, I want you to stop right here and think about that for just a moment. Here's the Apostle Paul. And if Paul could say, I haven't attained yet. I'm not perfected. I'm not there yet. If one of the greatest servants of God said, I'm not where I want to be yet. And, friend, we ought to have that same attitude of never reaching a point where we can say, yeah, this is where I need to be as a Christian. No, Paul didn't say that, and Paul had seen a lot more than I had. He was taken up into the third heaven, seen that vision by God. The same apostle Paul who later in his life said, I fought the good fight, I finished the race, I I've kept the faith. In the future there's laid up for me a crown of righteousness. If Paul could say, I haven't attained, I'm not there yet. And friend, I need to have a holy dissatisfaction with self. We're not saying that we can't have a good self-esteem. We're not saying that we can't be happy with the progress we've made. But what we're saying is, let's not get satisfied. Let's not get apathetic. Let's not sit down on our laurels and say, this is where we need to be as a Christian. I'm at the point I've always wanted to be. I can stop right here and really be happy with where I'm at. Now, Christianity is a forward progress in growth at all stages. You see, the status quo in Christianity just won't work. I can never reach a point in my Christian walk where I say, I've arrived. This is where I need to be. I'm it as a Christian now. No, that's not the idea. 2 Peter 3 verse 18 says, But grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. That word grow is in a durative or continual sense in the New Testament. It is a forward progress looking word, meaning that as I grow, I continue to grow and I never stop growing until I breathe my last. That's the idea. You see, 1 Peter 2 verse 2 says, but as newborn babes, desire the pure milk of the Word that we may grow thereby. And so we want to continue to have that idea of growing and never being happy with where we are. Always, you know, it's kind of like when you're working out or maybe someone is trying to lose some weight or maybe somebody's trying to build muscle. What, what if you say, you know, I think this is where I need to be today. You've got a goal, but you say, yeah, I just think I'll stop right here today. How are you going to do with building muscle or losing weight or maybe getting in shape? If you ever stop down and think, stop and sit down and think you're really where you need to be, you just kind of watch yourself go backwards. If you're not going forward, you're surely not standing still. You're going in the opposite direction ever so slowly. And so as Christians, just as Paul was still striving to know the Lord, Paul said in Philippians 3 verse 10, I want to know Him and the power of His resurrection. If Paul was still striving to grow closer to Christ and know Him, how much more us today? This is why Paul could say, as he thought about all the struggles and difficulties he had, how is it that Paul could say, rejoice in the Lord always? And again, I say rejoice. Because Paul never stopped growing. He never reached a point where he became satisfied with himself. You know, when you think about having that holy dissatisfaction with self, let's mention some areas practically where we could surely maintain that idea. For example, we could never reach a point where we say to ourselves, you know, I think I know the Bible about as well as I need to. That's not the idea. Jesus said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. It's not by food that we're going to live spiritually. It's by the Word of God. How often do you have to eat every day? Friend, you've got to grow in the Word of God every day. 2 Timothy 2.15, study 
to show yourself approved unto God. 1 Peter 3 and verse 15, be ready always to give an answer. And so when we think about areas that we need to really have that dissatisfaction with, a holy dissatisfaction, it ought to be in the almighty Word of God and trying to grow in it. Friend, we should never say to ourselves, you know, I believe I pray enough already. The Bible says, pray without ceasing. 1 Thessalonians 5, verse 17. Luke 18, 1, Jesus said, men ought to pray always and never lose heart. And the psalmist said, I cry unto you daily. We ought to always be striving to improve our prayer life, to, to draw near to God, as the Hebrew writer said in Hebrews 10, verse 24 through 26, to approach the throne of God to find help in time of need. Hebrews 4, verse 16. We ought to never reach a point where we can say, I've done enough good and been benevolent enough in my community. No, the Bible says, do good unto all men especially those of the household of faith. Galatians 6 verse 10. The Bible says uh, part, of our, part of true religion is to visit the widows and the orphans in their affliction and to keep oneself unspotted from the world. And so as we think about these areas, let's not grow lax, let's not grow slack in doing good as the Scripture so clearly teaches us. You know, as a Christian, one of the areas for sure that we don't want to have an attitude, I'm where I need to be and I've arrived at, is when it comes to the work of the church. And you know, sometimes I think if we're not careful, especially as one grows and matures, and especially as one maybe even ages in life, I think sometimes we say to ourselves, I've done enough work in the church, it's time to let somebody else. My friend, don't get me wrong. I understand that age and other physical abilities or lack thereof may not let one do as much as he might could have before, but let's not reach a point where we say, I think I'll retire in the work. Of, I'm reached 60, I've reached 65, 70. I think I'll retire from the work of the church and let some of these young people do it. That's not the attitude. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 15, 58, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding, in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor is not in vain. And then another area of which we want to have a real dissatisfaction is with spreading the gospel. I want to have a holy dissatisfaction with self in that I can never say, I've talked to enough people today, this week, or for my life, about the gospel. Jesus said, go into all the world, teach the gospel to every creature. I've not even come close to that. Christians have a strong desire to do that. But we've got to realize there is always a dire need to preach the gospel, to proclaim the praises of Him who called us out of darkness into His marvelous light ought to be our ever forward-looking goal. 1 Peter 2, verse number 9. Him we preach, warning every man, teaching every man that we may present every man perfect in Christ Jesus. Now. As we think about the first idea, having a holy dissatisfaction with self, let's move to Paul's next statement, and that is, if I'm going to have, really have a true passion for serving Christ, I've got to have wholehearted devotion to the Lord. I do not count myself to have apprehended, now watch this, but one thing I do. Forgetting those things which are behind, reaching forward to those things which are ahead, Paul would say, I press toward the prize. What is it I can do to have a true passion for serving Christ? Have a wholehearted devotion. Listen again to Paul's words. This one thing I do. I think too many times we get too many things going on at once. We get too many fingers and too many pies. We got all these things that are, are pulling at us and, and we're going in so many different directions that we really can't focus on the one thing that is necessary. You ever notice the, the emphasis on one in the scripture? The Lord our God is one. Deuteronomy chapter 6 verse 5. Jesus said to the rich young ruler in Mark 10 21, one thing you lack. Luke chapter 10 verse 42. Jesus speaking to Martha said, there's one thing that is needful. John 9 verse 25, the blind man said, this one thing I know. The psalmist in the long ago said, one thing I desire, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord forever. 
We're to be of one mind. 2 Corinthians 13, verse 11. We're to be of one heart and one soul. Acts 4, verse 32. All of those passages teach us we need to have a wholehearted devotion, a single-minded focus to really serve the Lord. You know, many of us may have that, that lack of dissatisfaction with ourself because we have a lack of devotion to the Lord. What is our devotion to the Lord right now? What's your devotion? What's my devotion? How, how committed am I? Really committed am I to serving God first? Seek first the kingdom of God? Matthew 6, verse 33. Luke chapter 14, verse 33. Whatever we got to do to get out of the way, we need to make sure that we serve God and put His cause first. You know, you can't get devoted to too many things and still allow God to come first in your life. What's the one thing I want to put before all else? Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. This is the first and greatest commandment. Don't let it, and I know it's so hard. In the world that we live today, we've got so many different things we're trying to do. We've got technology. We've got so many media outlets. There's so much going on in our lives, and maybe with your children, that it's so easy to get spread so thin that you meet yourself coming and going. Friends, sometimes you've got to clear the plate. Sometimes you've got to relook at your priorities. You've got to refocus on what's most important, and we all have to do this so that we could really have that wholehearted devotion to serving the Lord. 1 Corinthians 7 verse 35 says this, we want to serve the Lord without distraction. Let's get those distractions. Let's get those things out of the way. Let's not be double-minded as James 1 verse 8 teaches us. Let's really do our best to serve God with a wholehearted devotion. Now, there's a third step. Not only as a Christian must I have a holy dissatisfaction with self, not only must I have a, a wholehearted devotion to the Lord, one thing I do, I've got to have an upward direction in life. Notice Philippians 3, verse 13 again. Paul says, Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do, forgetting those things which are ahead or behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead, I press toward the prize. Notice again what Paul said, reaching forward to those things which are ahead. There's Paul's upward direction in life. When I think about what is it that I can do that will help me to really stay focused, really have that passion for Jesus, I've got to remember as a child of God, I have an upward direction in my goal. You see, this is what Paul would say to the church in Colossae. You, number one, have to look up. If then you were raised with Christ, seek those things which are above. Don't look down and get so caught up in the world. Don't look down and get so caught up in the anxieties and, and the difficulties and the trials that we often face. If you were raised with Christ, seek those things which are above. Look up, raise up your head, and look to the joy and the hope of heaven that all Christians have. You see, that's where we're going, isn't it? Isn't our end goal and destination heaven? Revelation 21, 4. It's that place where God will wipe away every tear from their eye. No more sorrow, no more death, no more pain, no more crying. All the former things have, have passed away. When you look up, you begin to realize, I've got something I really need to live for. I've got a goal that I need to keep working for, and I need to do my best to stay focused on serving Jesus. Paul would say in Romans 8, 18, I consider the sufferings of this present world are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. But you know, in part of looking up, as Paul teaches us, reaching forward to those things which are ahead, you also have to let go. Listen to Philippians 3.13 again. The Bible says, Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead. Part of looking up means you've got to stop looking back. You've got to let go of the things that may burden us from time to time. You know, all of us, like it or not, of an accountable age, have a past in sin. All have sinned, fallen short of the glory of God. Romans 3, verse 23. And you know, if Paul could learn to let go, 
I surely can. You surely can. Paul was there at the stoning of Stephen, holding their coats in Acts chapter 7. He was wreaking havoc on the church in Acts chapter 8. Acts chapter 9, he's dragging, ready to drag men and women to prison as he confronts Christ. Paul had done heinous things, injurious and a blasphemer against the cause of Christ, he said in 1 Timothy 1 verses 12 through 14. And yet if Paul, who had done harm to the church, harm to Christians, had imprisoned them even, could learn to let go, I've got to do the same. You know, sometimes in this life, I think people just can't learn to let go of the past. Listen to the words of Hebrews 8, verses 12 and 13. I guess as much as any passage, this helps us to let go of the past. I'll be merciful to their sins, their lawless deeds. I'll remember no more. Listen carefully. If God can forget, forgive, and forget, if God can forgive, and God can forget. I need to forgive, and I need to forget as well, and I need to put the past behind me. And then, of course, you've got to lay aside. Hebrews 12, verse 1, lay aside every weight and the sin that does so easily ensnare us, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. And so, so far, we've noticed three steps as we think about striving to really have that passion for Jesus. We've got to say to ourselves, I, I have not reached a point. I have not reached where I need to be. I've got a holy dissatisfaction with self. We've got to have that, that single-minded focus. And then we've got to have that, that upward direction in mind. And then fourthly, you've got to have an inward determination to never take your eyes off the goal. Notice Philippians 3 verse 14. Paul said, I press toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. You've got to have something to be determined about. You've got to have that, that inward determination. I press. And the word press in the Greek language is a very unique word. It's a word that means to, uh, to struggle. It's a word that means to do great physical battle. It's a, it's a word that describes being pushed to your limits and going beyond that almost. Uh, an example might be a runner who's running a marathon. And that runner maybe is running a very long marathon and about halfway through the marathon, he thinks he's about spent. He's done about all he can. He's run about as far as he can run. His legs, his muscle, his lungs are hurting like he can't begin to imagine. And the thought crosses his mind. Don't think I can go any further. But then he sees up in the distance that goal. And he says to himself, I'm going to keep running till I hit the dirt. I'm going to keep running till I hit the ground. I'm going to push myself. And he catches that second wind. He keeps fighting. That's the idea. I press. I fight. I exert myself toward the goal for the prize of the upper call of God in Christ Jesus. Friend, what can I do to really have that passion or relight that passion for serving Jesus? You've got to determine not to let anything get in the way of you serving God. And friend, I'll assure you, there are things that will try to get in the way. Some of those may even be good things. Uh, nothing wrong with recreation and having fun. But don't let that consume you. Don't let that be your goal in life. Family is a blessing that God has given to each and every one of us. But don't let family get in the way of you serving God and having that inward determination to put Christ first. All of us have been blessed with ways and means of providing for our families. We all have jobs if we, uh, that we can go to and work, and we're thankful for those. And, you know, the job consumes so much time in our lives. Don't let that be what life is all about for you. Really have that inward determination. No matter what, I'm going to put Christ first. I'm going to do my best to reach that goal of going to heaven. To the church in Ephesus who did have that problem with losing their first love, Jesus said this, in remedying part of the plan, in fixing part of the plan, Jesus said, Be faithful unto death, and I will give you the crown of life. You've got to look forward to that crown, that reward, that, that crowning moment where we can hear the wonderful words of Jesus, enter into the joys of your Lord. You see, we're looking forward to this promise. Jesus said, I go to prepare a place for you. 
And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may be also. Friend, let's just pause for a moment. Let's think about our own individual lives. I want you to think about where you are right now as a Christian. I want you to think about and ask yourself, am I really, really happy with my dedication, with my commitment? Is my passion for God and for holy things what it ought to be? Am I really bubbling over with zeal and enthusiasm to serve Christ and be a Christian? And if you're not, it may very well be the case that we need to re-examine ourselves. 2 Corinthians 13, 5 says this, Test yourselves to see if you're in the faith. Examine yourself. Let, let's take a, a long, hard look at our own life. Let's look at where we really are and our true commitment to the Lord right now. And let's see, do we really want to be where we are now? Have we got stagnant? Do we need to pick ourselves up and shake off the dust and maybe move forward a little and where we are as a Christian? Or maybe you've never become a child of God. Friend, our hope and prayer today is that if you're not a Christian, you'll see the passion for serving God that Christians have, that, that people who appreciate what God has done for them can have, and that you'll want to be a child of God today. You know, the greatest question in the world was asked in Acts 16, verse 30 and 31. The Philippian jailer, when he had to take a quick and deep look at what was important in life, walked away asking this question. Sirs, what must I do to be saved? And friend, we kindly ask you today, have you let God and the Bible answer that question? Are you a child of God? The Bible says in Acts 18, 8, many of the Corinthians, hearing, believed, and were baptized. Have you heard the message of hope in Christ? John 8, verse 24. Do you really believe with all your heart that Jesus is the Son of God. Romans 10 verse 10 and Romans 10 verse 17. Upon that belief, would you make a commitment to turn from sin and turn to God? Luke 13 3. And would you do what they did on the day of Pentecost? Peter said, repent and be baptized for the remission of your sins. If you've never obeyed the gospel, we urge you to become a Christian today. If as a Christian, your passion for the Lord is not what it ought to be, let's each make a desire to relight our passion for serving Christ. You may have just joined our program and are wondering, what is the Gospel of Christ? The Gospel of Christ is an evangelistic work of the Churches of Christ that reaches the whole world with the Gospel through TV, radio, and Internet. Our motto is to take the whole Gospel to the whole world. We believe in having a book, chapter, and verse for everything we say and do. And unlike many religious groups today, we're concerned about lost souls, not your wife. This is the Gospel of Christ. We encourage you to visit thegospelofchrist.com for a host of Bible study materials as well as audio and video copies of our lessons. If you would like to have a copy of today's lesson, please visit our website and fill out a media request form or you can email us at mail at thegospelofchrist.com. Call us toll-free at 1-855-458-3905 or write to us at P.O. Box 788, McMinnville, Tennessee, 37111. This is the Gospel of Christ.